Hi, I'm happy to have the opportunity to talk with you today about information currency, the invention that I've released to the public. In the next few minutes, I'll talk to you about what information currency is and how we'll be able to use it in order to better manage the huge amount of information that's available today and also to make more money from the information that we create and release to the public. The first step in the information currency process is to create information and make it available to the public. Here I've shown that as a video being uploaded to an archive like YouTube or Google Video. Also in this figure, there's the information currency issuer, which generates the information currency, and the information currency market, where the information currency is traded. The next step is to create an issuance request describing your information and where it can be found and sending that issuance request to the information currency issuer. The issuer sends in return a certain number of information currency units. Here are 16 information currency units that are your digital property to trade as you wish. Now that you've made your information available to the public, the public starts to use it. The three downloaders in the diagram, each possessing four money units, are the specialists who want to identify important information and purchase the corresponding information currency units so that they can make a profit by reselling them. The first trade is two money units for one information currency unit corresponding to the downloaded information. Next, another information currency unit corresponding to the downloaded video is purchased for two money units through the information currency market. Now, a new group of users accesses the information. Here in this example, there are five users, each with four money units, but of course, in real life, there can be many, many thousands of users, each with their own distinct amount of money. Now, one of the new users decides to purchase an information currency unit for three money units, creating a profit for one of the original buyers of one money unit. Another new user of the information decides to purchase one information currency unit, again, for three money units. After this sequence of transactions, the average price for each information currency unit corresponding to the downloaded information is 2.5 money units. This money price provides an indication of the value of the underlying information. We can imagine a similar set of transactions leading to market prices for the information currency units corresponding to the information called here Video 2, Video 3, and Video 4. Video 2's information currency units are traded at an average of 4.5 money units those of video 3 at 1 money unit and video 4's information currency units at 1.5 money units. These prices will make it possible for the value of the separate units of information to be quickly estimated in a way that can benefit the participants in the market for their knowledge and effort. One of the motivations for buying information currency units is that information currency units can be used to create verification certificates, which can be used to prove ownership of the underlying IC units. These verification certificates can be used to strengthen the relationship between buyers of information and creators of information by enabling buyers to prove that they have purchased the information currency units corresponding to the information that the creator has made available. Thanks for watching. I hope you'll visit my website and download the software that I've released. The website is at infoeng.sourceforge.net. That's I-N-F-O-E-N-G.sourceforge.net. 
I'm looking for partners to help me develop the very exciting applications of information currency that are yet to come. If you have any interest, send me an email. Thanks again.